What's going on, Paranormal World? By now, I'm sure everyone in the paranormal community know of the rich history between Zach Bagans and Nick Groff. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And I'm sure a lot of fans miss those two on screen. Well, three including Aaron Goodwin. Leave a like down below if you missed the big three, the original cast of Ghost Adventures. Although these two paranormal icons started off as associates and then friends and then co-producers of their own paranormal show, a paranormal show that ultimately swept the world by storm, especially during a time where the show Ghost Hunters was getting boring and stale. Move over, old heads, and come the new generation with better ideas. Similarly to what is happening now, Ghost Adventures are the old heads, and you have this new generation like Sam and Kobe creating a new lane for paranormal. But who would know back in 2004 with Ghost Adventures that Zack and Nick's show would ultimately cause them to feud? 20 years ago, Ghost Adventures was established through the legendary documentary which was filmed in Nevada. It was here where the show established a cult following which some fans are still watching till this day. The full body apparition following Nick and of course the flying brick heard around the world. This ultimately catapulted Zack and Nick to ink reoccurring TV deals for the show Ghost Adventures. The show did amazing in the ratings and still successful in its own right 20 years later. And with lucrative TV deals, more money, and more opportunities, that's when things become difficult, especially with friends. Friends, family, and business partners. When money and greed is involved, friendship seems to always be affected, and not in a positive light. And that's exactly what happened between Zach Bagans and Nick Groff. In some episodes during the 2014 season, which had some episodes actually filmed in 2013, but released in 2014... I think all the fans noticed the passive aggressiveness between both Nick and Zach. You could slice that tension between those two during that season, specifically the Zozo Demon episode. Everyone knows about that. And I feel like that was the last straw. And I feel like all the fans would collectively agree with that. And after that 2014 season, Nick Groff began working on other projects, such as Ghost Stalkers. Nick was the co-producer of this show, and he also used his production company called Groff Produ Productions on this TV show. Unfortunately, Ghost Stalkers was a failure, and after one season, one season, and only six episodes, the show was canceled without hesitation. After that failure, another opportunity came along, and that was Ghost of Shepherdstown. From 2016 to 2017, with only 15 episodes, it was a decent show, great concept, but not enough to keep the networks happy. Now, from 2016 to 2019, Nick Groff teamed up with Katrina Wedman for Paranormal Lockdown. Now, Paranormal Lockdown is probably the most successful show he's been a part of post-Ghost Adventures. I enjoyed this concept. Spending 72 hours and sleeping in a haunted location is a great idea for a show. And this show definitely had potential, and a lot of people are suggesting that Zach Bagans caused this show to be transferred over to the UK and not here in the US market. Now, that I can believe, and you know, Nick Groff has spoke on that. So after Paranormal Lockdown was canceled, Nick Groff started Viddy Space which was basically an independent streaming service for Nick Groff and independent filmmakers. And, you know, it had horror movies, paranormal stuff, all kind of stuff. And here's the thing about Space: The one thing that Nick Groff cannot blame Zach Bagans for is the failure of Space. And again, this was a great concept, but just another failure by Nick Groff. And then he tried to create his own web series called Nick Groff Investigates, which was on YouTube. And it did little to nothing. So now, in current times in 2024, over the past couple of years, Nick Groff has been utilizing YouTube to push out his paranormal content. He has this show called Groff Adventures, which is a play from the former show Ghost Adventures, which is kind of smart for a marketing standpoint. Now, if we're going by metrics, Nick Groff has been 0-6 with projects after Ghost Adventures. I mean, some can argue one in five because of Paranormal Lockdown because I thought that show was pretty cool. But other than that, Nick Groff has definitely had some great ideas. But for whatever reason, 
Fans don't consistently gravitate or support him long term. Maybe it's his personality which is hindering him. We all know that to be successful in today's time, creators got to be theatrical, like Zach Bagans. And we all know from day one that Zach Bagans had the it factor for Ghost Adventures. He was the one that was going to lead the charge and was the alpha male. Hypothetically speaking, now just think about this. If Aaron Goodwin left Ghost Adventures, which he actually did back in 2014. Yes, Nick Grove and Aaron Goodwin was gone from Ghost Adventures. At least Aaron was momentarily. I bet some people didn't know that. He actually was fired. Anyone can put two and two together on why he wasn't involved in the Demon House, which came out in 2014. The Demon House documentary was filmed in 2014. And Richard Rascoli, a producer from the Travel Channel, confirmed that Aaron was fired for exposing secrets about faking evidence during the show in past seasons of Ghost Adventures. But anyway, enough of that. If Aaron Goodwin had left Ghost Adventures, do you actually think that he could um, come up with great ideas and hold up an own show by itself? I don't think so. I think if Aaron Gooden would have went independently, he would have struck out like Nick Groff did. But to transition the conversation to Zach Bagans, he has been a workhorse for the past two decades. And although his on-screen character come across as a jackass, he's managed to keep Ghost Adventures going beyond 25 seasons. However, that's not to say Zach Bagans didn't take a huge blow in 2014 after Nick Groff left. Ghost Adventures has not been the same since, and I think a lot of people can agree with that. Leave a thumbs up if you agree with that. Zach and the crew will never recover from that. And after 2014, I believe everyone noticed that they stopped traveling to the East Coast and overseas. Now, the show is one-dimensional because all they do is go to California, Nevada, and Utah. That's all the places they basically go. And it's been a couple of theories surrounding that because I heard that Zach Bagans, he's afraid to fly. He has a phobia of flying. And a lot of people says that he don't want to be far away from his business, which is his haunted museum, which I can understand that. And I've always heard that Zach had his palm read and he said that he would be in a plane accident or something bad would happen on a plane. So he doesn't want to fly now. Who knows? All I know is that the show is crippled because of that. And it's only so many places they can go on the West Coast. And I know they have this spinoff show where Zach Bagans is on Zoom and he's doing this investigation with the crew overseas. Um, not overseas, but to the East Coast. But, you know, that's a pointless show in my opinion. But Zach has came up with so many spinoff shows to distract the audience from the lack of traveling. And I'm happy that a lot of fans are noticing this. Specifically after 2014, you had Ghost Adventures Aftershock, which wasn't anything special in my opinion. And then in 2016, it was Deadly Possessions, which I actually enjoyed a few episodes of that because I love the history. And followed by that, you know, he had other spinoffs and we're still getting spinoff of Ghost Adventure shows. And he had separate productions with Eli Roth as well. Zach really had the travel channel in a chokehold from 2016 to 2020. It was all him. And even during the years after Nick Groff left Ghost Adventures, Zach Bagans has had some controversy. One off the top of my head is Zach Bagans and Tony Sparrow going back and forth after Zach Bagans touched the Annabelle doll. And Zach Bagans also had a lot of people feeling some type of way with the streaming transition. A lot of people was upset about that. And even in the present day, many Ghost Adventure fans seem disappointed in what the show has turned into. From not traveling places, and every place they do go to, everything is demonic. The show could be called Demon Adventures for all we know. <laughs> and the way the shows are edited, it seems like they abruptly end with no conclusion. We don't know whether they help the family or anything. We don't get no follow up. Big difference from the older episodes and these newer episodes. Also, a somewhat distasteful thing that people are noticing with Zack's on-screen character is his bully tactics towards the Ghost Adventures crew. We all know how he treats Aaron, his character treats Aaron, and poor Billy, <laughs> Billy does anything Zack Bagan says. And I think a lot of fans don't like that. So here's the thing. 
The beef between Zach Bagans and Nick Groff intensified in 2013. Along with Dakota Layton, he's included in this beef as well because it seems like he spearheaded the campaign to get Zach Bagans counseled last year. And we all know that the Travel Channel and all its shows moved to Discovery Plus which was good, but at the same time, Discovery Plus and Warner Brothers, they merged, and that's when everything got kind of murky. Every paranormal show was apparently canceled besides Ghost Adventures, which a lot of people around the paranormal world were upset about it. But specifically, Dakota was. And Dakota was basically saying that Zach Bagans got Destination Fear canceled, which caused Dakota and Nick Groff to take the social media and spread the word of how bad Zach Bagans was as a person and how he canceled the shows and he blackballed them. Which is kind of confusing because Nick Groff spoke good on Zach Bagans several times in the past. And he even went to his hunted museum and took a picture and everything, smiling and, you know, having a good time. So why do all of that and, you know, help Zach Bagan's business by going to the hunted museum and promoting it? And now he's the enemy. I don't know. Something doesn't sound right about that. Allegedly, it seems like Dakota and Nick Grove tried to do this and use Zach Bagan's name to promote their new shows that were coming out. And, you know, after Destination Fear was canceled, we know Dakota came out with Project Fear and Nick Groff came out with Groff Adventures and both were premiering on YouTube. And after these shows came out on YouTube, we haven't really heard anything about them being blackballed by Zach Bagans. We haven't heard nothing after a year. And I feel like this. After Nick Groff parted ways with the Zach Bagans and Ghost Adventures, from the outside looking in, it seems like Nick Groff didn't make the most of his opportunities after 2014. You have to adapt, and if that means being overly dramatic, then you might have to do that. And we all know that all of these paranormal shows are 99.9% .9 fake. So integrity is obsolete at this point, especially in 2024. And the strange thing is, I think most people are okay with that. And I know for me and most people, I just like listening and watching the history part of the locations. And, you know, the rest is just entertainment for me. And also, there are two shows, two paranormal shows that are outliers for lasting years and years. Ghost Hunters or Taps, whatever you want to call it, and Ghost Adventures. Nowadays, anything other than those brands, they don't last. These gimmick paranormal shows have extremely low lifespans, and unfortunately, Nick Groff had to learn that the hard way. And like I mentioned earlier, Viddy Space was perfect. However, not enough Nick Groff fans were able to translate over to that. And I also want to mention this. Nick Groff claims that Zach Bagans blackballed him, and I'll give him that for some shows, like specifically Paranormal Lockdown. But here's my issue. You can't blame Zach Bagans for the failure of Vidispace, your own streaming service. He has no pull in that. He can't blackball you from your own streaming service, or for that matter, your own YouTube show. So, some accountability has to be taken on Nick Groff's behalf. Also, Zach Bagans created a hunted museum. Nick could have had ideas as well. You know what I'm saying? Like, to branch out and do your own thing. You can't just stay in the same lane and, you know, expect for you to, you know, grow. You know, because things will pass you by. Overall, Zach Bagans has capitalized for better or worse since 2014. Ghost Adventures has definitely gotten worse since 2014, but Zach Bagans has gotten richer. And since 2014, Nick Groff has had ups and downs, but it seems like he's still trying to find his niche. But ultimately, from a mainstream point of view, Zach Bagans during the past 10 years it seems like he's doing a lot better with paranormal influence and creating more fans for the paranormal. So what do you all think? 10 years later, did Zach Bagans do just fine with letting Nick Groff leave Ghost Adventures? Did Nick Groff live up to the expectations after 2014? Let me know down in the comment section below. And if you love any and everything horror movie related, anything paranormal related, then make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can see every time I upload. As always, be safe. Peace.